What's good, YouTube? My name's Matt, aka Inspiring Spoon, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about Game Dev Tycoon and how to make the perfect possible game that you can make. Now, the first thing I want to mention is, and I find this tutorial extremely appropriate because there aren't that many tutorials within the game. Sure, you can find tutorials online, which is what I'm doing, but I just wanted to show you guys um, how to start up and get a good game rolling. Now when you're starting up and you're developing your new game, the first thing that I want to suggest to you is you don't need the R&D lab, which is what you earn later on in the game, and you don't need the hardware lab to create a successful game. All you need to create a successful, successful game is a game engine, a current game engine. And you want your staffers, if you have any staffers, if you're just one person, um, you, won't, you won't be needing to worry about staffers. But you want your staffers not to have um, a tiring meter. And what you'll see is it's like a yellow meter. And it'll slowly go down. And whenever you're making a big game, let's say you're making a AAA game, and Jane here is getting tired, you're, you're basically fucked because she's gonna slack off a little bit and your game won't end up being as good as it could have been. So let's say you're developing a new game, and whenever you're developing a small game, you don't need these people to work on the small game. You can have them work on contracts. Contracts, right here. Contracts. Um, whenever you're working on the small game, you don't need these people at all. All you need is you. Whenever you're working on medium game, you might need two more people. Whenever you're working on a large game, you might need um, five people. And whenever you're working on like a AAA game, you need all your people to be rested, preferably right after they get off their vacation. After they're tired, you send them off vacation. Preferably right after they get off of vacation, you want to develop a AAA game if you have that option. So, you want to pick a topic that you're familiar with. I'm most familiar with post-apocalyptic. So I'm going to click post-apocalyptic, and you first off, you want to name your game. And whenever you name your game, then you're going to want to pick, do you want this game to be small, medium, or large, or triple A? Um, so, after you figure that out, I'm just going to have a small game for demonstrational purposes. Whenever you figure that out, you're going to want to pick a genre. I can pick two genres because I researched it in the uh, research tab. Whenever you make games, you, you earn research as you make the games, by the way. So since I researched, I can sort of narrow down my genre. So instead of just being an all-action, post-apocalyptic genre, I can sort of make it, you know, RPG. It's an RPG action post-apocalyptic. This might, this specifies your game. But if you don't have this, don't worry. Um, you can still make a successful game without having two genre options. I don't want this to be an MMO for demonstrational purpose, and you want to pick your platform. Now, as I said before, I have researched a lot, so I can pick three platforms. Um, my first platform I want to pick is PC, because PC, as you can see here, has kind of a, a good audience, sort of, for RPGs. Play system, um, you kind of have to guess if you do not know you have to you have to guess if you do not know um, you have to guess if you don't know their uh, genre. So since I don't know their genre, and that's that's my uh, console that I developed, but since you don't know the genre that they uh, specifically like, you just just guess. You know, pretty pretty soon here you'll start to figure it all out. So you want to pick your most current. Uh, game engine, and it has to be current, guys. If you do not have a current game engine, your game will ultimately fail. I'm sorry about the squeaky chair in the background, if you can hear that, by the way. So, um, once you get your galaxy, you want to 
pick an pick an engine. Hi Galaxy. You want to pick your engine, your most current engine. And guys, like I said before, you have to have a current engine. You have to have developed a current engine, or else your games will be utter shit. So you want to pick your audience that you're going for here. I usually go for mature audiences because I'm late in the gaming platforms. Um, you earn this later in the game if you're just starting out. So once you get all this settled with, once you get all this settled with, guys, you're gonna go ahead and click next. You're gonna, gonna go feature selection, and you're gonna pick what graphics you want. You usually want the highest type of graphics that you've researched through your engine, which is why having a current engine is such a big deal. You don't want your game to be looking outdated. You don't want your game to feel outdated either, which is why you need a current gaming engine. So once you once you get here, you kind of have to ask yourself, well, what does a post-apocalyptic RPG really need? I'm guessing that usually post-apocalyptic RPGs have terrible engines. So you're gonna want to bring that down. But since I clicked action, I'm gonna move that up a little bit since I clicked story and it's mainly since mainly RPGs are story I'm gonna put in RPGs and this is where you can put in the stuff that you researched through the engine so my story and quests here is 85% so that means my story and quest will only have it like it will only be 85% effective that's a good way of looking at this thing so you want to select something from the selected features so let's say since it's only since it's 85 percent, I want to um, take off uh, full motion video and put interactive story and immersive storytelling. Oh, there we go. And moral choices. Um. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. So let's say uh, my engine is looking at 44 percent. Well, I'm gonna click off online gameplay, and there you go. Now it's not at 44% efficiency. And what this will do, guys, whenever it's at 44% efficiency, that's gonna lower your score. And I think that it does more harm than it accomplishes. I think this is how this works. So if you're gonna wanna click save game, if you're gonna wanna click multiplayer, if, if you have these. And you're gonna wanna sort of max that out. So there you go, I maxed that out. And gameplay, as you can see here, it's 53%. Um, I'm gonna put uh, skill trees needs to be there. Character achievements. Um, skill trees, I'm thinking that this does not need... Um, um, character progression. Alright, so there you go. There's, there's my layout right there. So once you figure this out, once you figure out what your apocalyptic RPG really needs, what you think an RPG would, what makes an RPG good, and what makes an RPG an RPG. So once you do that, you're gonna wanna um, click OK once you figure this all out. And this is your time of location, so this is how much time your guys are gonna spend on it. So as you can see here, since this is blue and this is blue. Story and quest, that's gonna be, um, they're gonna spend the majority of their time on story and quest and gameplay. So you wanna click OK. And they're gonna do their thing. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright, you might get these interviews which will hype your game up to make it sell more. So whenever you get this interview option, you probably want to go with the interview option. You're probably going to want to hype your game up as much as possible so people will buy it. That's just a general tip from uh, inspiring through there. So, um, for demonstrational purpose, I'm not going to really care about this. Alright, dialogue. I think RPGs carry more dialogue, the so level design needs to be up. 
So you're just gonna want to have to uh, have a general idea of what makes an RPG good. I think the dialogue makes the RPG good, but again, I like level design, so I'm not gonna risk it. Um, usually they have shitty AI. Um, level design needs to be... Again, since this is a small game, I can't, I can't have all these things. Whenever you go into AAA games, you can have most of these things. So don't feel bad whenever you're developing a small game and you can't have all these options clicked in. Uh, small games generally take less time to make. Medium games take more. Large takes more. A AAA takes a huge amount of time. So don't feel bad whenever you're clicking because that you can't have all of it. Um, dialogue tree. There you go. Alright, they're gonna do their thing, they're gonna make those bubbles happen. Um, so, um, I think RPGs, like I said before, it's an RPG, it's a role-playing game, slash action shooter. So I think maybe, um, world design, uh, takes, I think world design takes more um, uh, is better for an RPG than graphics, because when, when uh, RPGs come out, usually people don't speculate on the graphics. They want to have a good story. Yeah, I guess. So as you can see here, it has a lot of bugs. You want to wait and make make sure they get rid of all those bugs, or else your game's gonna be utter shit. All right, they're getting rid of the bugs, as you can see here. Um, Oh yeah, for these, um, you might see game conventions come up, and what game conventions are, uh, have, if you have ever heard of E3, you know what a game convention is. E3 has just came out, actually. So you probably know what a game convention is. Um, this is a way for you to hype up your game, but be careful not to spend too much or else you will go bankrupt easily. So I, I'm pretty rich, so I can just go ahead and get a large booth. Um, there are mods out there to help you uh, re um, get a better grasp of Game Dev Tycoon, make it easier for you. So as you can see, they put some things in the research thing as they were developing. And they put some things in design and technology. Research helps you um, pick more topics. Um, technology, you want to have your design and technology sort of balanced out. It's okay to have more than one or the other, but it's just it's generally a... You have to have your own rule of thumb there. Alright, we're gonna finish our game. The hype is 310, so hopefully this sells. I didn't really max out on anything because... I didn't really get any new records here because um, this is a small game and I've been developing AAA games in this, uh... in my business. In this business. So the more design you level up, that might um, level up the engine more or the graphics more or the world design more. The more technology you get, that might that might contribute to the engine or gameplay. These two things help you level up, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So it's ready. So we're going to go ahead and release the game. Hopefully this does well. I do not know. Okay. Five, five. Alright, six. Okay, so as you saw here, my game did not do very well. The whole basis of Game Dev Tycoon is basically trial and error. Um, you can max out your possible potential by um, looking at uh, RPGs and saying what makes an RPG good, um, what makes action action good. And whenever you get those two genres there, I think that's how I mixed up, is uh, RPG and action, I don't think, really go together. So whenever they give you these reviews, you kind of want to speculate, like, how could, I, how could I have done better with that game? Could I have uh, more made it bigger, gave it, like, a large instead of a uh, small? Or maybe, um, maybe the RPG action didn't go well, or maybe the systems that I made for it 
wasn't wasn't a good way to go because maybe the PlayStation 5 doesn't like RPGs. Maybe um maybe uh Game Heroes being a bitch. I have no idea. But you just wanna speculate. You just wanna speculate what made your game bad or what made it good. So after you close that, uh they added this to the game, you can go to um crap. Um I thought you could um game report. Oh yeah, so you can generate a game report, which is a way for you to tell to tell you the player to um find out what exactly went wrong. Five. All right. All right. So platform audience match diamond box mature great. Platform game genre match diamond box RPG great. Sound seems to be not very important. So maybe I put too much sound and fall out, or maybe I put too much sound there, and post-apocalyptic and RPG action is a great combination. Alright, so maybe it was just the choices that I made. Again, you have to speculate about what made your game bad and what made your game specifically good. So there you go guys, that's how you um, can make um, a good, perfect game. Tune in next time when my I might go into the R&D lab a bit and show you how to do that. Or I might go into the hardware lab. Hardware lab. Um, as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day.